Hi everybody, I'm Genevieve, otherwise known as Emma, from Emma Etc. And this is what my voice would sound like if I were in a large room. This is what my voice would sound like if I were in a small room. And this is what my voice sounds like in the room I'm really in. Hi guys, so I have been working on making um, a reverb in Max MSP for the past couple of months um, and it's not quite finished, but since it's usable as a Max for Live device, I thought I would um, get it out there and start sharing it with the public in order to sort of get some feedback and um, learn about how I could improve it. I decided to make this because I've been particularly interested in reverb for a while, um, especially in the applications as far as like creating um, a process of mixing where panning, reverb, and mixing like levels are all sort of the same step. Um, and I think that that involves sort of replicating a really immersive um, environment. In my understanding, this would probably require modeling the space that you're theoretically listening to the song in. Um, and so I've sort of taken the first step in doing that. And the way that I've done that is uh, by creating a quadraphonic um, reverberation chamber angle calculator virtual echo chamber device um, which is free and the link is in the description and you can download it and uh, experiment if you like and I'll talk about that more. The idea behind this is that when a sound plays in a room, it leaves the speaker and it hits your ear, but it also bounces around the room a lot of times really fast. And all of those come back and hit your ear too, and your brain does the math to figure out which of those is the direct sound. And for the other ones, that information of the angle and the amplitude from each tells you a little bit, tells your brain a little bit about the space that you're in. We can think of these different reflections as discorrelated, meaning that they arrive at your ears at different times. This information is decoded by your brain to tell you where you are, along with your visual sense as well. I've oversimplified this a little bit, but if you're interested, you can look up head-related transfer functions or HRTFs. This idea of discorrelated directional sound is basically the principle behind my entire project, and it works really well with four speakers because each speaker pair, that is the front two, the left two, the right two, and the back two, create a sort of border to the space. Um, and changing the relationships that the sound and the ways that the sound interacts with these borders can create really interesting results. Okay, before I say anything else, a quick word about quad. I made this project in quad, quadraphonic, which basically means four speakers. It's sort of like a minimal version of surround sound, which sometimes includes up to eight or more, sometimes 32. Um, basically, the two stereo pairs of speakers called the front bus, which is these two that you can't see, and the rear bus, which is those two purple panels back there that you can see behind me are positions so that each is facing a central point in a room. This allows for spatialization and all sorts of really interesting sound design tricks. But basically, as far as I'm concerned, it just sounds really huge and it's really fun to listen to. It's also not as hard to set up as you might be concerned that it would be, although it does take a little bit of experimentation. My setup basically works on a four channel audio interface and the very first iteration worked with an interface that you can usually find for about 150 bucks online, which is this one, the Complete Audio 6, which has six actually IOs, but um, two of them are available only through SPDIF. So it has four that are accessible for these purposes. Aside from that, I built a pair of DML panel speakers for around $100 that work great as my rear bus. If you wanted to do this temporarily though, like for a dance party or something, you could just have a friend bring over any stereo pair of speakers and plug them into your four channel audio interface. If you don't want to deal with all the gear, you can simulate quad using a plugin called Quark, and I'll include a link to more info about that as well. This reverb is based on Bill Gardner's thesis paper, and it basically involves using all pass filters to simulate the different reflections of the sound. 
Gardner goes into a lot more detail, but the basic principle is that the sound reflects through each all-pass filter in series, each reflection filtering the last reflection in a slightly different phase amplitude relationship. I took these reflections and I mapped them to the angle that they would arrive at based on the distance between the listener, the virtual source, and the boundary of the room, which is the wall, or in the case of the patch, uh, is the edge of the pink square, as you can see over here. The effect is that each signal returns at its proper angle and amplitude, simulating the discorrelation effect that I described before, except from all four speakers in a quad setup. Okay, the rest of this video is just going to be me sort of demoing how this works. Um, so uh, if you will kindly focus your attention to the right portion of the screen where my Ableton window is. Um, I'm recording this on a little mini mid-side microphone, which is down here, as you can see in the mirror. Um, Basically, this thing is uh, pretty cool, but unfortunately, since it's quad, the only way to record it is to record it in stereo. So unless YouTube eventually starts supporting quad audio, this is what we got to do for now. So just so you can get a little taste and you can also just see the monitor levels here. Here's what we got. This is one of my songs. Yeah, so basically uh, that's what it sounds like um, with a full song. I'll sort of demo it with some specific samples just from the Ableton library so I don't get DMCA'd, but um, yeah. Just go in here and grab a couple samples. Ooh, that's kind of, oh, that's good. Yeah, okay, so here's what it sounds like with the drum. Here's what it sounds like with a drum break. As you can see, the math is not perfect, so there are some spots where it works a little better, some spots where the bounces are maybe calculated incorrectly, like for some reason down here, it doesn't reflect in that speaker at all. Um, but yeah, different spots work better or worse. This is the room size control. This is a giant room now, this would be like a club. Yeah, that's basically, um, that's how drums sound. Let's try super soft. Here's what it sounds like with uh, Super Saw from AG Cook. I really like the short sound. It sounds like Versus the big. Broken again in that corner. Right now the direct sound is off, but you can turn it on and then you get the direct sound channel as well. makes the panning a little easier to hear, but also creates some phasing issues sometimes. Anyways, that's pretty much all I've got right now. Um, give it a try, and huge thanks to my patrons who made this possible. Uh, their names are in the description. Um, if you want to support me on there, I really appreciate it. I'm, I don't upload stuff that regularly, but there's a lot of stuff on there already, and the support really goes a long way. That's how I built 
those speakers um, and really kind of how I've made this whole project possible. Um, so yeah, that's like pretty much, that's the best. Patrons, you guys are the best. I really appreciate it. Um, anyway, thanks. <laughs>